Hey, I'm Hunt, and this is Hunt on LSU, your channel for LSU Fighting Tiger football talk. Enjoy the video. We want you to leave a comment below, hit that like button, and subscribe right below the video. Enjoy. As we start with some disappointing news on the recruiting trail for LSU, as last night we learned the decommitment of DeCorian Moore became official. Uh, DeCorian Moore, the number one wide receiver in the nation out of the Dallas area, huge speed threat, um, and a teammate of LSU running back signee now, um, and that name completely escapes me. <laughs> but, um, he's a teammate of, let's go back to his class and we'll see. I can't think of the running back's name in live uh, radio. That happens uh, quite often. But uh, he's a teammate of, it's just still not coming to me. Help me out, Beck. Can you give me the running back's name? For who? The running back that signed with Caden Durham. Caden Durham, I could yeah, not Durham. think of his name. High school teammate of Caden Durham over there at Duncanville, a number one wide receiver in the country. Part of that big trio uh, that is coming in as the number one running back, number one quarterback, number one wide receiver with Bryce Underwood and Harlem Berry. He made his decommitment official last night. I don't know that this was completely shocking to those that follow recruiting very, very closely. Uh, there have been whispers that potentially DeCorian Moore may look elsewhere, and it turns out he is going to do so. He didn't say in his uh, decommitment post on social media uh, whether or not LSU was still in the running. He did say that they've got a culture like no other, but he's going to look around, and let's be very honest. Um, it is financially in your best interest to look around at this point in your high school career, especially when you're the top-ranked wide receiver in the nation. Obviously, Texas is going to come calling. You figure Oklahoma will come calling as well. LSU's got a really good sales pitch for them. You've got the number one quarterback in the country committed in your class that you would figure you'd have a couple of years to play with. Um, and I don't know if LSU is completely out of the race or not, but DeCorey Moore does announce that he's going to look around. It is very disappointing. Um, but if there is one position that I feel good about LSU restocking the shelves, it's probably wide receiver. We've seen an amazing run of wide receivers come through here over the last 25 years, and DeCorian Moore looked like he was in line to be the next one, um, but turns out he is looking elsewhere. LSU now, when you look at their signing class, does have one other wide receiver commit in the class. That's Teron Francis from Edna Carr. He's thought of as a four-star prospect um, by On3 and ESPN. Rivals and 24-7 uh, and uh, Rivals have him as a, a three-star, but he's, uh, he's thought of as a, a really talented wide receiver. And LSU does a really, really good job of identifying those and bringing them in. Um, so you certainly want to continue to recruit DeCorian Moore and try to get him back in the boat. And I think LSU's got a good case there, but the fact that he decommits does not sound great for LSU. You look at what it does to their recruiting class, and this this signing class looks monster. At this point, you've got 11 commitments. I mentioned Bryce Underwood. I mentioned Harlan Berry. Uh, Jabori Antoine is a four-star recruit in this class. So is Tyler Miller. Uh, interior offensive lineman Devin Harper. Linebacker uh, Charles Ross. Keelan Moses from here at U High is a four-star recruit. I mentioned Francis. J.D. LaFleur is a highly regarded tight end with some great size. Uh, Brett Bordelon is thought of as a really strong offensive lineman prospect. So still a, a class that's got a, a ton of juice behind it, um, but you're looking at a class that now on on three jumps down to number two in the country, and according to 24-7 LSU with the sixth best class in the country. Long way to go from that to that early sign. Well, not as long as it used to be, but a long way to go for that early signing period. But at wide receiver, LSU looks pretty good at this point. You certainly uh, are going to miss what Malik Neighbors and Brian Thomas brought, but you've got such great numbers and such great depth at the wide receiver position um, in in your current roster, and if you look at the guys that are coming in, um, you weren't heavy on wide receiver uh, in this class that just signed and is either enrolled in January or will this summer. Um, but you did have Jelani Watkins, who was a four-star, uh, come in at uh, at wide receiver, um, and you had Michael Turner from John Curtis come in at wide receiver, uh, and then uh, I think yeah, that was it at wide receiver. So you had you had two guys bring in there, and then you bring in a transfer in Xavier Thomas and certainly C.J. Daniels. So. Um, look, it's a it's a big loss to have lost uh, DeCorian Moore as a commitment from this class, uh, and I hope that LSU continues to foster that relationship and can try to get him back in the boat. But it feels like it's unlikely if you listen to what the experts have to say. Um, he's going to be a guy that's going to probably cash in uh, quite significantly on an NIL front, and he's got a lot of teams lining up for his services. And when you create a bidding war, you can really ratchet that number up. I know that's a, something that people are really uncomfortable talking about, but we know that it is the reality now, and and certainly. LSU does have 
money in the coffers. We talked to Wilson Alexander earlier this week. He wrote a great piece up on The Advocate about where LSU sits in the NIL front. Said last year about $4 million for the team. They're budgeting $8 million for this year. There are some teams that are up closer 13 and 14. Some teams on the lower level down closer to 5. LSU's right there in the middle of that. And most of that is going to be spent on bringing in high schoolers and retaining your current roster. That's the way that LSU is setting up their money. They're going to make sure that when you get somebody into the program and they do produce for this roster, for the sake of the discussion, it's guys like Will Campbell, guys like Harold Perkins, guys like Emory Jones, guys like Greg Penn. I mean, these are the guys I mean that you're talking about. You're going to keep them around. You're not going to, generally speaking, unload the war chest on some mercenaries from the transfer portal that come in. So I don't think that this is a situation where you look at LSU and say, oh, they just simply don't have the money. I think it's a situation where there are some other suitors and DeCorian Moore thinks it's in his best interest to kind of look around. Why lock yourself in a box when you can create some market value? I would love it if Joe Joe Recruit, DeCorian Moore in this case, would say, just want to go play for the Tigers. I've I've got purple and gold in my heart. But we know that that's just not necessarily the reality for a lot of high schoolers. And so DeCorian Moore kind of p- opens the market back up for himself. And again, I-, I hope LSU can pull him in, but I just don't have a lot of doubt that LSU is going to be able to find a lot of talented wide receivers. They can find them here in the state of Louisiana. They can find them nationally with the brand that LSU has. And certainly with Bryce Underwood in this class, you would think that that would get a lot of wide receivers' attention. So I have no doubt that LSU will go out and sign some really talented receivers. But anytime you get a decommitment of a guy that high profile, it stinks. And we've been talking about this high school class for so long because they've got that trio, number one wide receiver, number one quarterback, number one running back. And that's that's newsworthy. And when you've got a class that's ranked towards the top of a lot of, uh, a lot of lists, That's newsworthy as well. It's the way that Brian Kelly wants to run this thing, and they've done an exceptional job. But you understand when you're dealing more so with out-of-state kids and you've got the the environment that you've got around college football and the recruiting scene, which is now driven almost entirely by name, image, and likeness. Not not entirely. I think some people would suggest just always to the highest bidder. I don't think that's always the case. It it does happen sometimes, but I don't think it's always the case. In this situation, LSU is going to have to work a little bit harder to try to get DeCorey and Moore uh, in the boat. I would think having a Duncanville teammate in the signing class ahead of him, I would think having Bryce Underwood would be a a strong pull, but obviously there are other factors that are going to play here um, with uh, with the Corey and Moore's recruitment. So it's uh, it's a situation that is fluid, as all recruiting situations are, and we'll see uh, what develops here moving forward. But a bummer for LSU to fall out of the top spot on one three to lose the number one wide receiver in the country as far as commitments goes. We'll see how things shake out. But I I, I, I trust this staff implicitly to recruit. When you look at the guys. They have have got on this staff, and for wide receiver, you're talking about Cortez Hankton, who's been great at recruiting at two different stops. Um, there, there is a a relentless group of recruiters that I'm certain will fill those shelves um, with the Corey Moore or without, because they've got a, a staff that's excellent on the recruiting trail. So, bummer of news, but I think there's good news around the corner for LSU on the recruiting fund as long as they've got this staff uh, in place. Hey, thanks for watching Hunt on LSU. Before you get out of here, do us a couple of favors: hit that like button. Leave your comments below and subscribe to the channel for all your fighting Tiger football talk. See you next time.